Hey there everyone, you are with me here at the lovely Belmont Wharf. Can you see behind me the Belmont Wharf? We're here together and we are just about to jump into Mark chapter 15. But before we do that, I want to think about something that we've been told a lot. If you grew up in a Christian household, if you went to church, even if you went to this school in primary school, we've become accustomed to this idea that Jesus uh, is like a superhero. There was that song, I think it was a song released a little while ago. Jesus, you're my superhero. You're my... You know that one? It's like we, we get thrown this picture in front of us, that the way that Jesus operates, the way that he functions, he's like a superhero. And in many ways, that's that's true, right? He is. He's got superpowers. He can do amazing things. He's, he's like the king and boss of the world. He's more powerful and greater than any of us. So it's true in some ways. But I think in some other ways, it's fundamentally not true and unhelpful. So what I want you to do now, just for the next little moment, three minutes or so, is think about all the ways that you know Jesus is like a superhero, and then all the ways that you know that Jesus is not like a superhero. Come up with a list of them and tell me what you think. What'd you come up with? There's a bunch of different ways that I think Jesus is like a superhero, but there's some fundamental ways that he's very different. I'm going to read you just this little moment or a couple of moments in Mark chapter 15, and I think this is where Jesus moves away from the kind of superhero narrative, or he moves away from the way that most superheroes operate. Okay, this is Jesus before Pilate. He's being interrogated. Very early in the morning, the chief priests and the elders and the teachers of the law and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus. They led him hand and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? Asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priest accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, are you going to answer? See how many things they're accusing you of. But Jesus made no reply and Pilate was amazed. I think this is one of those moments where Jesus actually refuses to do the superhero thing. What happens when superheroes are captured by their enemies? What happens when they're being interrogated or they're just moving towards their death because an enemy is against them? What happens? They fight back. They go berserk. They you know, turn into the Hulk and start smashing things and they crush the forces of darkness and evil that are against them. But Jesus doesn't. He actually even refuses to speak. Uh, what about when he's being crucified? So this is the moment where all the evil and darkness and sin in the world uh, is being focused at the person of Jesus. Actually, the Christian tradition says all the uh, evil, darkness and sin in the world is, is actually coming into his being. He is becoming sin for us. What does Jesus do when faced with that kind of evil? Let me read it to you. It was nine in the morning and they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right, one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So, you're going to destroy the temple and build it in three days. Come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief preachers and teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he cannot save himself. Let this Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and believe those who crucified him hurled insults at him. What are they saying? They're saying, Jesus, if you're really powerful, if you're really the king, then show us your power. Fight back against us. Destroy us. But Jesus refuses to use violence and power against his enemies. Now, this is the moment where I think Jesus is least superhero-like. He doesn't fight back. At one moment, I think in the Garden of Gethsemane, when the people come to arrest Jesus, uh, Jesus' disciples decide to fight back. And Peter grabs a sword and he chops the ear off a soldier. And Jesus stops him. And he picks up the ear off the ground and he puts the ear back on the soldier. And he says to his disciples, what are you doing? He says, don't you realize that I could command 10,000 angels and they would come and they would put an end to this? But that's not what I'm going to do. What's Jesus saying? He's refusing to fight back, to use power and violence and force against his enemies. What's he saying? He's refusing, or he knows, that to save people, he will not use 
power and violence and force. But to save people, what we need to be saved is a great display of love and self-sacrifice. Why does he do it? Why does he let Pilate and the forces of evil and darkness succeed against him in that way? Why does he go to the cross and die at the hands of evil men? I think he does it for this reason. He does it because he knows that we will not be saved, that people cannot be saved by great acts of power or violence. He does it because he knows the only thing that can save us, the only thing that can save us as humans is a great display of love and self-sacrifice. He does it because he knows that the only thing that can save us is you and you and me is him taking on his back our sin and our brokenness and our pain and bearing it for us so that we can be freed from shame and guilt and hurt and sin. He does it because he knows the only thing that has the power to save us is a great display of love and self-sacrifice. It's the only thing that can change us and save us. That's the kind of king that Jesus is. He's the kind of king who is not like a superhero, not fighting and fighting and fighting to push back the forces of evil and darkness, but the kind of king who wins and succeeds and saves, not through violence, but through love and self-sacrifice in laying down his life so that we can be free from sin and brokenness. So maybe let's give up this idea that Jesus is a superhero and talk about him more like a loving parent who would do anything to rescue his kids and save his kids, who would lay down his life to rescue his kids. Maybe that's a better image for Jesus rather than a superhero who fights uh, and uses violence and anger uh, to rescue people. You with me? Amen.